What's happening, man? This ATL beat banger fat boy. I just jumped off the porch with dirty glove bastard. You did. Bad boy. What's happening, man? Welcome to DGB, man. Glad to be here. Long time coming, man. It is. Yep. Yeah, happy, excited you're here, man. All right, so I want to start this off um, just by running down some of your history. You've been producing for almost 20 years now, right? Yeah, man, almost a dub in the game. Yeah, so let's go through some of your credits and uh, get people um, up to speed. So you did uh, Gucci Wasted, mm -hmm. Gucci Man Vet Passed By with OJ. Vet Passed By. My Kitchen. My Kitchen. Uh, Atlanta Zoo. Atlanta Zoo. <laughs> you also did a lot of production for OJ. OJ. Ludacris. Luda, Jeezy. Jeezy. Gorilla Zoe. Zoe. And more recently, T.K. Kravitz, TK, Birdman, and Bird. NBA Youngboy. Yep. Um, any songs I missed that people probably really familiar with you with? Ooh. Uh, hmm. Shawty Red, uh, Drifter. Drifter, yeah. Which, which led to uh, Snoop Dogg, mm. uh, Sensual Seduction. Hmm. Um, and what, Cut Friends, Camouflage. Yep. Um, which started it all for me, basically. Yeah. Um, Rocco. Uh, yeah, I can't even remember the name of the song. <laughs> uh, Rocco. What was the name of that song? Uh, damn, I can't remember the name of the song. It's That's on the. Right. It's on the first Rocco. Uh, yeah. Album. Um, hmm. Another Rocco song. Uh, Hustle. Hustle. Yeah. 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 That was. Man, that's probably one of my favorite yeah, rock songs. Washing Powder by OJ. Washing Powder, you know, that's OJ. My favorite for a lot of um, people. Hmm. Uh, Do Me Like That with uh, Monica, hmm. uh, Jeezy, and Yo Gotti. Hmm. Yeah. Um, hmm. Shout out to DJ Sense. Yeah. Um, Cannon and Drama. Yeah. Um, man. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> the yeah, point is, there's a lot. There's some more right? stuff. Uh, I did something for um, some goats in the game. Um, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh, that's right. Record yeah. called Gone. Um, we actually left uh, Fantasia's brother on the hook, Rico, Rico Barino. Hmm. Um, there's a few things here and there, you yeah. know. Yeah. Juvenile, uh, everything, which originally had T-Pain on it, hmm. which I was kind of upset uh, T-Pain, they took T-Pain off the record because he wasn't clearing any more, oh, really? any more features, yeah. but, oh man, that, that was... Man. Where did they end up putting on that in place of him? Bobby V. Bobby V? Oh, okay. Yeah, and Bobby, Bobby, Bobby still did his thing, but, you know, I mean, it was a hook that, -Pain. that Pain wrote, yeah. so, you know, T-Pain was going to make it yeah. sound... T Pain. Yeah, and once you, know you hear a song with one artist, once you song, hear it when the morning, you, get you know, used to it. yeah, you get used to it. So you know, yeah. um, and 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 the song already had leaked out, so everybody was kind of already expecting T Pain when the album came yeah. out. Yeah. It was Bobby, and you know, and Bobby, Bobby's my dude. You know, it was cool. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying it was just what happened to T Pain. <laughs> you know, so it, it is what it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, Bobby V too. Yeah, Bobby. Um, shit. Um. And I don't know, it's yeah. just ask the people. <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. And you, like you mentioned, you got your start uh, working with Camouflage in uh, Savannah, Georgia. Yeah. And for those who weren't hip to Camouflage and his music, what can you tell us about him? Man, Flodge, man. Um, Flodge, he actually, for me, was the first trap rapper. Hmm. Um, he 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 uh predated Gucci and Jeezy. Yeah. Um Boosie and, and, and anybody else that you would put under the trap umbrella. Um well, matter of fact, um it was around the same time as Wayne and T.I. Okay. So for me, Flodge was like the first trap rapper that Hmm. You know, the first rapper that was really saying he wasn't putting any uh, any cut on it. Yeah. You know, thousand eight grams on the scale. You know, and you could kind of tell who was really in the streets and who wasn't because they they didn't know 
<laughs> what a thousand eight grams was it's like yeah. oh you ain't really in the yeah. streets you know what i'm saying you know, that's a key you know what i'm saying but you know so he was the first one that uh that i ever heard that was like you know he wasn't putting no cut on it yeah. um but ultimately the record that people really really knew him for was cut friends yeah. mm -hmm. you know girl record so with him um he was uh trapping and fucking <laughs> that's what he was you know what i'm saying so you was going you was going to get that was your yeah. playing field you know <clears throat> trap pussy <laughs> and that was him and he was signed to a major right yeah yeah uh universal universal yeah yeah that was the first situation um uh, major situation that that i was a part of um that the cut friends record um was the song that ultimately um brought everybody yeah. brought, brought with all the labels we we were actually um uh, def jam south huh. scarface was yeah. was was running def jam south at the time um so we sat down with um def jam south first um scarface at, at the time um nelly was like shattering yeah he was he, he came diamond, he, he? he came out the door yeah. swinging uh nelly came out the door swinging so um def jam south was 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 um preparing to roll out luda mm. and because of fucking nelly <laughs> they were like hey man just don't sign anything with anybody else until you hear an offer from us you know this fucker nelly is just like doing <laughs> fucking a hundred thousand a week yeah. you know what i'm saying so we don't want to roll luda out the wrong way yeah um so you know we, we 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 took the deal memo with them of course we took some other meetings yeah. um and ultimately we went with universal um which Preferably, I would have wanted to be with Def Jam. Yeah. Um, that was the best fit for for us, mm -hmm. for Camouflage. Def Jam was the best fit. Um, they really knew how to market street rappers. Yeah. Um, but you know, when somebody makes you a, a decent offer, I mean, you're going you're going to go with. It. I, I still I still think the Def Jam offer would have been still better than the. Yeah. Than the Universal offer, but I mean, Universal kind of came in. They came in with a, you know, like they, the Godfather said, <laughs> a, the offer we couldn't refuse. You know, yeah. they made us offer offer we couldn't refuse, so we went with it. Yeah. And what was your relationship like with Camouflage? That's my little brother. Yeah. I mean, that's my brother. Like, um, Flodge was, Flodge. <clears throat> what people might have seen from him. On, from the outside looking in, he just seemed one way, but mm -hmm. he was a student of the game. Like he, he, and this was at a time when, when most uh, rap consumers in the South was, especially after the uh, the Tupac and Biggie yeah. fiasco. You know, they was kind of more on the you know fuck that New York shit yeah. and, and 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 all that. You know, the West Coast and the South kind of kind of rolled together, yeah. mm -hmm. but New York, you know, the South was kind of like, man, fuck that New York shit. And they, they wouldn't hardly let us in on top of that. So, you know, that was the attitude in the South, but secretly, you know, Camouflage was still studying all the, all the New York rappers and yeah. just like I'm sure like Wayne, Lil Wayne was and, and all that, cause I mean, you still had some of the dopest rappers in the game yeah. coming from New York. Yeah. So, you know, he was, he, he was, a, uh, he was a student of the game and um but he wasn't you if you if he didn't let you in like that yeah. you wasn't really going to know that mm -hmm. so you know i spent the night at his, at his at his grandmother's house with him before and he had like a shoe box full of cassette tapes and all yeah. that i'm looking at his cassette at, at, at his at his um hip-hop collection mob deep yeah biggie mm. you know it's like people that you was like oh you do listen to this <laughs> shit, huh <laughs> He's, you know, he's like, hey, yeah, don't tell nobody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but he was a, he was a student of the game, and if it was dope, he was fucking with it. Yeah, yeah. And how old was he when he, uh, when he was killed? Uh, twenty, twenty or twenty-one. Yeah. 
20 or 21 so he, he was he, he was he was just the baby so we was all you know we was all young just coming off the yeah. porch getting into the game you know what i'm saying and you know unfortunately you know je especially in in that city in savannah um jealousy and envy or old street beefs yeah they find a way to catch you but it's kind of like uh boosie said um you know when you blow up from a city like that mm -hmm. you gotta leave it, you gotta leave it. um we, we we tried to get him to leave yeah um a few times but you know he was born and bred savannah it's just you yeah. know i was born here you know i'm gonna die here yeah that was his thing and ultimately uh and and the light bulb did come on he, he you know because um um him and his girl was um you know pregnant with the with their first child um fly j who is doing her thing right now oh yeah that's right she was on uh one as of the we speak shows, right yeah. right uh yeah she was she was on um the rap game and yeah. america's got talent yeah. mm -hmm. um so she's doing her thing right now um she was you know they were pregnant with her yeah. so you know light bulb came on he started seeing life a little bit differently yeah. you know about to be a about to be a dad and all that so um but ultimately you know the streets caught up to him yeah. and uh you know that whole crabs in the barrel yeah. kind of thing in savannah it just it caught him yeah what was his potential at the time it was him wayne and ti that was the South. Hmm. And had he lived up to what he was going to be, he was going to be one of the top, he was going to yeah. be one of the top dogs in the South, along with Wayne. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, like I said, he, he, uh, he predated Jeezy. Yeah. So if he'd have got to where he was going before Jeezy even hit yeah. the ground running, you know, it, 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 it would have put a little more pressure on Jeezy because Camouflage would have been one of the first rappers that anybody heard that was going straight at it. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like I ain't putting no cut on this shit. I'm gonna I'm talk this street shit just like, you know, I'm not doing it for the sake of punchlines and, 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 and all that. Yeah. yeah, I know I can rap, but I'm gonna say this shit the way, <clears throat> the, way the streets wanna hear it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it probably would have put a, uh, it probably would have put a little more pressure on, on, on yeah. Jeezy. He, he would have had to be a, a, a an ally mm -hmm. instead of being a foe yeah. with Jeezy, you know, but he definitely would have, he definitely would have been one of the tops. Yeah. And uh, how did his death affect you and your career? What were you thinking of? Oh, man. he was like your main artist you were working with. Yeah, I, I was, uh, I mean, we, 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 we had a, we had a roster and um, I likened our roster to, I, 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 I called this a, a baby death row. That's kind of how we were. Everybody on our label, <laughs> everybody on our label had uh, had records, yeah. including me. You know what I'm saying? I, I think it might have been only one, only one producer, my dude Dushan. He was the only one on the label that didn't have a record of any type, yeah. um, and maybe one of our rappers, um, Rome Bad Daddy. But everybody else on the label had some kind of mark against them, some kind of strike. Yeah. So it really was a, 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 a thug label. Um, but uh, yeah, the label uh, it was uh, it was it, it was it, it was full of it was full of potential. Like it, it really was a real label. But um, when he passed away, a lot of guys started leaving because they felt like he was the flagship. Without yeah. the flagship um you know where was it going to go mm -hmm. um me it affected me in terms of you know i i felt um it that knock was going to really really hurt um and then i i actually went to prison after that mm -hmm. um i did a year in prison mm -hmm. um camouflage died in may and I got locked up in September, 9-11. Oh, wow. <laughs> 9-11. So I got locked up, did a year. So my whole life was, was, was just on pause. And, and literally um, just really had time to, like, think about all that stuff. Yeah. You know, it's like, damn, you know, flies gone. 
like my career is on pause you know what i'm saying so and not only that you know when when you when you locked up everybody in there wants to watch BET and then, you know when they find out who you are they want you to beat on them fucking steel tables and shit yeah. like I don't want to beat on no damn tables you know yo fat take us to the club I don't want to go to no fucking no. club yeah. and I'm watching you know I'm watching I'm watching videos and shit I'm looking at the videos people that I know yeah. and all this I'm like I'm supposed to be out yeah. there you know what I'm saying that's what I do yeah. you know like I'm in here with y'all you know so you know my life on pause um I came out in in 2004, and uh, you know I, I had like a I was still gonna try to make it work yeah. at Pure Pain. You know my loyalty, you know loyalty of everything first. Mm -hmm. You know Pure Pain is my family. They um, the Hicks boys, you know P Hicks, um, Zach, and Luke Mine. They gave me my first shot mm -hmm. to do music. They believed in me. You know what I'm saying. So I, I went home. You know what I'm saying? I, I went. I, I came right back home. Um, two more years, I was there, um, but we were still losing artists. You know, yeah. like um, head. I, I, one of my favorite artists on the label, Headbuster, got killed, mm -hmm. and that was probably the final straw yeah. for me. It's like you know, how long before it's my turn? You know, somebody somebody hit me coming out the studio yeah. late night. So uh, that that was head headbuster's death was probably my final straw. Um, I, I just kind of felt like Savannah ain't gonna let us be great. It's it's just they ain't gonna let us be great. Yeah. Um, so that's when I made the decision to you know okay I, I'm I'm gonna leave. Um, I'm gonna head to Atlanta and spread my wings and yeah. Here come Jeezy and Gucci. Yeah. And uh, you ended up looking with uh, Shorty Red when you first came to Atlanta, right? So, well, no, nah, it, it 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 didn't go it didn't go that way. I, actually, um, my man Mike Fresh was the one that convinced me to just man, you know, you don't know, you know, it might be you coming out the studio, man. I, you sh you should probably need to head to the A. Yeah. So he convinced me to to make the move. And when I got there, um, the first thing I did was. Um, I, I made a, a 40 beat snippet CD, hmm. 40 beats, 40, 40 beats. And Kinky B was having a birthday party at a uh, magic city. Hmm. So we went to the birthday party. Um, and I gave him a copy of the CD. I, I just knew, I just knew, I was like, man, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm going to make my way over to Jeezy. All right, man, I'm gonna have to take this ass whipping if it's gonna come, because it's gonna be hard to get close to bruh. Yeah. But I did it, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, 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 and I had one last shot, because the club was getting ready, the lights came on, hmm. club was getting ready to close and all that, like, shit, this is the moment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the lights came on, um, <laughs> and it's crazy because, because Jeezy looked at me like, you know, he was looking at me like I was getting ready to pull out, <laughs> you know, and, and, and shoot him. So he's like, I, I don't know how this nigga coming up at me. So, so he was looking at me, you know, I reached in my back pocket to pull out the CD. And Jeezy was looking at me like, you know, he's looking down to see what the fuck I'm doing. You know, I pulled out the CD and said, hey, man, I, I love everything you're doing, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, check me out. You know, the number on it, contact info, yada, yada, yada. You know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't approach it from the... the the uh, stance that everybody else will on some, like, hey, man, if you fuck with me, you're going to go platinum. You gonna, you know, I was like, yeah, whatever. Just give me the shot, man. Just check me out. Opportunity, that's all I want. Yeah. A couple of days later, Kinky B called. Mm. You know, so that was what ultimately got me to, to move to Atlanta because Kinky B called and Kinky B, they offered me a, a CTE contract. Mm. Um... And what year is this? This is 2006. 2006, okay. This is 06. Um, they, they, offered, they offered me a contract um, with CTE to be in-house, but I turned it down, hmm. believe it or not. And, and I turned it down because uh, the, money, the money in the, in the contract, I was making more per track with Pure Pain in Savannah oh, yeah. than what they offered me with CTE. Hmm. Now, the trade-off would have been 
I'm with the hottest label smoking. Yeah. So that was that was the you know, that was the yin and yang, you know, let me figure this out. You know what I'm saying? But ultimately, um, I passed on it because I was just coming out of an in-house situation. Yeah. And I didn't really go into another in-house situation where, you know, CTE has first right of refusal to anything I do, which would have been cool because if Jeezy jump on something, yeah, go you know, on. it's out of here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But still, um, I, just, I still, I just came from that. First right of refusal for everything I do. Um, and I just felt like I wanted to spread my wings and work with everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and people were already like after me, you know, wanted to work with me and all that from, from what I did with Camouflage. Um, so I, I turned it down. So it went from that to me trying to find um, management. Okay. So I started interviewing um, managers mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Um, I interviewed um, Greg Street, a mm -hmm. um, couple other couple other people, some some prominent names in Atlanta, um, and I ultimately came across uh, Big Ron, yeah. my my okay. my current manager. And uh, at the time, he was managing Yola. Mm. So they just come off the road um, with Yola on a tour. So I sat down with him, called him up. We had a meeting. Um, and out of everybody that I interviewed, everybody else that I interviewed was kind of had their hands full because they, yeah. they had big artists that they were managing and all that. Um, so for me, it's like, you're not going to have time to really... Yeah put into me you can't dedicate no time to me so um ron assured me he's like yeah i'm going i'm gonna put i'm gonna put everything into you so that was the ultimate decision you know I, I, and i went with ron you know ron at you know ron didn't have the name everybody else had as far as management mm -hmm. ron had a name in atlanta from the clubs yeah um club envy chocolate and all that um the bounce um, you know, we started as a bouncer in the bounce, Black Shield security and all that. So, um, so he had a name in Atlanta, yeah. um, and he was, he was building his managing chops, mm -hmm. starting with Yola. So I went with Ron. Yeah. And from there, um, when Ron had Club Envy, uh, Ron, Shorty Red was like a little brother, you know, he's mm -hmm. a little brother f for Ron. Couldn't even get into the club. And he was always around. Yeah. So um, Ron asked me one day, you know, like, you fuck with Shardy Red? I'm like, yeah, I fuck with Shardy. Shardy cool. Um, he said, would you want to would you, would you wanna have a meeting with him? I said, hey, yeah, yeah, I'll meet with Shardy. So he put me in front of Shardy. Me and Shardy had a meeting. Shardy liked all the, you know, everything he was hearing on the on the uh, same CD. I gave, I gave Ron the same CD I gave Jeezy. Yeah. And, you know, that was, I was, that was my... That was my uh, application for everybody. It's like, yo, that, this is my resume right here. You know, besides, you know, cut friends, of course, with yeah. camouflage, everything I did with him. So Shardy Red was, he was fucking with it. And uh, we agreed to, you know, go in business together. Let's, yeah. let's, let, let's start, let's, let's, let's do it. And um, Beat Bangers was, you know, going up. Yep. And there it is, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, and that was, that, that was a great thing, you know, me and him teaming up. It was just like, that was a force to be, force to be reckoned with. Yeah, yeah.